Okay, so we have our MANU switch all plugged into the router and now we will configure the MANU switch. The switch's defaults are a username and password, both are admin and the default IP address is 192.168.0.1 and if you don't get this then something has went wrong and you might have to factory reset it. Uh, take a pin, press and hold the reset button on the small hole for up to sec 10 seconds until all the port lights switch off and then let go and they'll come back on again. Then connect your ethernet cable from your desktop to port number 5 of the switch and then set your desktop client network settings to manual as IP192.168.0.10 uh, with the 24 mask and you might not need the gateway uh, setting over here it'll work without it uh, that can be left empty so let's do that first and once we get that done we'll log into the switch web uh, GUI from the browser on this uh, IP address go to the network edit connections edit the ethernet one go to IP4 settings select the method and set it to manual and then add an address uh, we'll give something in the range uh, of 10 I think uh, 192.168.0.10 and the net mass would be 24 gateway don't need it uh, we'll just leave it as empty because dot one is the uh, default for the uh, web GUI on the manage switch so and it does not have any uh, DHCP enabled on it so I can assign any uh, IP address after the dot one and we'll get a connection click on save and then disconnect and then connect the Ethernet uh, interface back up again and open up your browser and type in 192.168.0.1 and we're logged in uh, we're on to the GUI dashboard uh, to the login page the GUI login page for the TP-Link switch and the, the username is admin password is also admin and click on login and you're logged in so now that you're logged in the next thing to do would be to configure it first thing to do under switching create a trunk port, uh, with port 1 and 2 as part of trunk 1 we're going to create trunk 1 and trunk 2 on the trunk 1 we're going to assign ports 1 and 2 on the second trunk we're going to assign port number 7 8 this is where uh, these two ports are where uh, our router is uh, connected to Okay, we go to switching, port trunk, the so 1 and 2, click on 1, 1 and port 1 and 2 are part of port trunk 1, trunk apply, and on for trunk 2, we will set port number 7 and 8, apply, and then save. Save the settings, otherwise we'll lose it. And what was next? Uh, enable VLANs. 802.1Q VLAN. Okay. We'll go under VLAN. Uh, you can set up uh, according to uh, MTU or port based, but we're going to set it up as 802.1Q1. And we're going to enable this first. By default, it's disabled. And gave a message uh, said if you enable this the other two uh, what whichever one was uh, enabled will be disabled now let's create our VLANs the first VLAN was WAN and we'll give and it was for number tag was 79 and we'll call this WAN and it is tagged because it's a trunk port and since uh, on port 6 is untagged because that's where uh, the internet cable goes going through 
So that will be untagged. Click on add modify. And then we'll go on to port number, uh, the VLAN number 80. And we call this was for LAN. And this is also tagged for the trunk port. And on number five, the port number five, which we are using uh, to connect to the desktop client. And then we'll leave the rest of it as is. Click on add modify. And then 81, this is the Wi Fi one. Again, trunk port is all tagged going towards uh, the, uh, the router. And port number four will be untagged. And we'll click on, yeah, we'll add that as well. And port number 82, the VLAN number 82. And this was, I think, for the servers uh, that we're going to use. And I'm going to connect my server uh, host machine to this trunk. So I'm going to click on tag for this. And also, it's going to be routed, all, all that traffic will be routed to the router. So we're going to. I'm going to tag this as well. And then 82, 83, that was DMZ. I'm going to tag this and I might host uh, the DMZ uh, public web servers on to the server trunk portal going out through here. So I'm going to leave this I'll also select this as tag. Click on add and the next one was Tor. This is also going to be hosted on my virtual server connected to this trunk port. So I'm going to give this the VLAN ID. Oh, sorry. That, this is Tor and this is 84. It's going to be tagged over here and also tagged over here. Add modify and we're done with the VLANs. Now click on save again. Save configuration. Go to VLAN and we're gonna set the PVID setting. By default, uh, the untagged PVID is all default uh, LAN one, uh, VLAN number one. And I have to change this. I want to change this by default. Uh, if you want untagged traffic to go through. I want LAN number for the WAN. I want uh, 79. And on the LAN, which is port number five, uh, LAN PVID is 80, the VLAN ID. Click on, as soon as I click on 80, I think I apply, I will lose connection. So I'll leave that for later and I'll set up the Wi Fi first. 81. Apply. This is the port where my Wi-Fi is connected to and untagged was one, but I want untagged traffic of 81 going through uh, to my Wi-Fi access point. So that's done. And what else is left? Okay, VLANs and we created all the PVIDs except for the one on the LAN. And I'm going to change the default IP address of the uh, IP setting of the switch. I want to change it to this. So I'll go back to the system IP setting. As you can see, uh, DHCP is disabled by default. And now I'm going to change the IP address. I'm going to give this 1045.80 and dot. Uh, since one is on the router interface, I'll give it two. Leave the sub subnet mask as it is, and I'll set the default gateway here to the interface on the router. Now, as soon as I click apply, I will lose connection because I'll change the IP address. So click apply. Operation successful and I lost connection. Okay, now I need to change my local uh, desktop IP address again to point towards uh, to that subnet 
that would be uh let's go settings here you go uh that would be ten dot four five dot eight zero and i think we should that should be enough click on save uh disconnect and this enable that interface again and we're back login again with the admin admin username password and one thing left to do was we left the lan uh, as is we'll change this and uh, to port number 80 i'm sorry pvid to 80 and click on apply and i think i may lose connection again maybe not oh it's good Okay, now I'm going to go back uh, to my network manager and change the Ethernet settings to, let's delete this and switch back to automatic DHCP. Close this. Uh, disable the internet interface and then enable again. Let's check our uh, new IP address. Yes, we got the new one. Okay, and what else am I missing? Save settings, the some plant settings to DHCP, yes. Okay, click on save settings. I think we're done. We've set it up. Let's go check uh, if, if we can access the router now. Uh, what was it? 10.45.80.1. Uh, okay. Advance. Let's go. Yes, we can. Admin. Uh, let's see. There you go. Now, one thing is left to do, and that is, I'm going to show you how to connect to the WAN. I'm going to change this to PPoE. I'm going to connect directly into my local uh, ISP. I'm going to change this to PPoE. I uh, don't need DHCP6, so I'm going to disable this. I'm going to tap in my username and password. Type that on. And call the service name TPG. That's my uh, ISP. Click on save. Apply. It's going to take a minute. And it's done. Let's go check our gateway. Okay, I don't know why this is showing up. Accept. Accept. And there you go. We have an IP address from my ISP. Okay, and that's, that's it for uh, the managed switch. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my Wi-Fi access point and set that up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you want to really support this channel. And also check out the affiliate links in the description below.